Good morning. Welcome to our devotional time together. Should Christians view death like unbelievers view death? Today we're at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're at verses 13 and 14. Let's see what it says. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. So this is an interesting passage. It says, do not be ignorant. Do not have a, a, a worldview like those that don't have the Christian faith. So in the natural viewpoint, survival of the fittest, state-assisted suicide sort of goes with that. Uh, the idea that we are evolved from a muck, uh, just strange mixture of acids and germs and things. Some of the smartest people in the world today believe it. How about that? But from that perspective, death is just seen as a natural thing. It's just part of living as it happens briefly, and then we all die. Is that a proper thing for Christians to share that kind of a viewpoint on? Death is not a friend. Be very certain and clear of this. In the Bible, death is an enemy. Death is unnatural. We were designed to live forever. We were not designed to die. It's because of sin that's entered the world and this temporary situation that we uh, ramble on and we have diseases and inflammation and chaos and mayhem and violence and death. These are all, every bit of it is unnatural. And so to the Christian, the Bible tells us that death Death is not a friend. Death is an enemy. In our particular passage here, we should not sorrow like others because the other people are lacking a hope. But we have the Christian hope. We have the idea of life after death. The Bible clearly teaches that after we die, uh, we sleep in the grave. We'll talk more about that tomorrow morning. It also talks about the resurrection. That's, that's where our hope is. So we have a different worldview, a different view of eternity. Death is a loss, but it's a temporary loss because after death comes resurrection in God's order. There's the resurrection of condemnation and the resurrection of the just. So at some point we'll talk about those. But what we have here is uh, a hope. We move toward eternal life. And so we want to be in God's plan for that. We don't want to just absorb these random wor uh, values that are coming to us through uh, worldly, secular thinking. The Christians shouldn't view things just like everybody else. We have a different viewpoint altogether. Our eyes are open in a very different way. And so we want to keep that in mind as we seek to live the life of followers of Jesus. Each person is formed, the Bible says, in the image of God. And so each person has an innate value that's much more than some descendant or of a slime creature that, that came out of the mud as a small microscopic uh, DNA that eventually evolved into us brilliant humans. Each one of us who is in the image of God has the potential to influence someone else for eternal life. I mean, how much value does each person have if we can influence another person? And if even one person is one to the kingdom and they live for eternity through the power of Jesus, through the, the life that God gives them after this life, that's pretty infinite. That's a pretty giant contribution to unselfish people living forever. Each life is valuable. Don't think of it a different way. It is a tremendous gift to be alive, to be human, and to be made in the image of God, and to be remade in the image of God. So let's not see death uh, just like other people see it, who just say, oh, shark got another one, and he's lunch. It's lunchtime for the sharks. No, it's time to live. So Paul says here in the text that at the end of the time, uh, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And of course, Jesus went in the grave. If we give our life to, to God, then we die with him. He's promising that he will bring us out of the grave, alive and well, weller than we've ever been when Jesus comes at the second coming. So there's our hope. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you that Jesus is coming and is going to deliver us from the grave. Thank you that all those who believe in Jesus have a hope of eternal life. So, Lord, we, we just give praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, let us not sorrow as others, but let us value life. God be with you today.